Good evening everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So nice to see you here again on a Monday evening. Here we are again, seven o'clock Monday evening, making it Monday on the Lizzie Curtis page on Facebook and on YouTube. I hope you're all well. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend again. And uh, so what's the weather been like? It's been a bit hit and miss, hasn't it? It's been a bit sunny and it's been a bit rainy, <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure you've had a lovely weekend and you're welcomed Monday, first day of the week, into your lives with gusto. Yes, indeedy. Well, perhaps not with gusto, but it's sort of, Monday kind of sneaks up on us, doesn't it? We're just getting into the mood of being off on a Saturday or a Sunday. I'm never off, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and then... <laughs> And then all of a sudden it's the start of the week again. But of course, it's great for us, isn't it? Because it's making it Monday and we love being here on a Monday night at seven. And I love to see everybody. So just a couple of name checks, we might as well. Uh, so good evening to Linda and Janet, Rosemary, um, Cheryl. We've got Paula and Jan. We've got Linda on YouTube. All the rest were on Facebook. Um, <laughs> we've got Sandra here from, from Boston in Lincolnshire. Um, we were thinking the US there for a minute, weren't we? We've got Dawn here as well from YouTube. So it's just lovely that we've got everybody joining us and it's so lovely to have you all here. And I think you're all ready, aren't you? You're all ready to join in. <laughs> I know some people find it difficult to join into Facebook Live because you've got to keep refreshing the page, haven't you? So you can um, get the notification or at least see the the event and that and you know that's that's just how it is i'm afraid <laughs> but it's great that you could join me and i have to say oh good evening abigail she says hi mum abigail was our uh, guest host uh oh was it two mondays ago now i think it could have been three is it two or is it three <laughs> and i'm sure abigail will do another guest host event some, perhaps sometime next month. I should have to ask her because it's quite nice sometimes having a Monday off. I do nothing. I do nothing. I put my feet up and I watched the whole event. It was great fun. And um, you can tell she's a my mother's daughter, so to speak. Um, so we're on project 27. I, I'm not going to say week 27 because we kind of had a break, didn't we? Uh, over Christmas time, I think it was. I um, can't remember now. But um, we're on Project 27, so there's loads now to choose from. So you've either got them all, or you've got some, or you've only got this week's because you're new, um, or you're waiting to decide whether you want any at all. <laughs> but you've got 27 now to choose from. So if you head over to lizzycurtis.com, you click on the shop and it'll download all the different areas of my shop but the top one it says min patterns just pop in there now if you're on your big pc i find it easier to have the shop little tag higher up on the page and then all of the drop downs are shown if i have the shop further down it doesn't show them all bit confusing i know that's how it is i'm afraid anyway so nice to to see you everybody's saying that it's lovely blue skies in essex we're not far from me actually and yes Looking through my skylights, I've got oh, one skylight, I've got grey clouds and the other skylight, I've got white clouds and blue sky. Perhaps it's two different houses I'm in. Who knows? <laughs> but it's been a glorious day here. I thought we were going to have um, rain, but we didn't and we had sunshine. But anyway, let's crack on because we've got a lot to do. This is a great little project. This is called Wendy. And I called her Wendy because we're weaving and I was trying to find something. I, I was trying to find a name that sounded like weaving or woven. <laughs> I, I gave up. I think it would have been a little bit obscure. Um, so we, I ended up with Wendy and I always, always, thank you, Christine. I always, always ask Kath to rename it if she wants to. And sometimes she does and sometimes she doesn't. And I think she's a bit like me. It's like, uh, no, I can't think of anything else that'll do nicely. <laughs> we get sometimes a little stuck. <laughs> um, so, so this is Wendy and I've got two versions of Wendy. Um, I can't remember if I posted the second version in the pictures. Let me have a quick look sometimes oh yes I did um, I put uh, the last picture or add a button and I've got the um, the little pouch I'll show you that in a second 
Um, so yeah, so there we are. Um, that's a Wendy. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, it's actually quite nice to do a woven project because from making this tiny little purse, a little pouch, it's, it's a bit like popping your toe in the water to see if the water's the right temperature. It's a little project to see whether you like this type of thing. Now, some people actually stitch the weaving down and some people don't, I don't. Um, I quite like the fact that you can still, you know, get your finger in places here. You can move bits about that haven't quite st stuck down. You've still got an opportunity to move them. Um, and I don't get hung up about that at all. Uh, it's not my thing to get hung up about stuff. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to have a little go. Um, most of it is stuck down because we're putting this onto a stabiliser, a nice cotton, well, I'm using a cotton stabiliser. You can use what you like, um, an iron-on. Um, and it it's kind of does secure most of it. Um, and then we just add a little popper. And in the one that I did before, this one here, I've actually done a button and a buttonhole. And obviously you can do that if you want to. I'll, just, I'll show you perhaps on the side camera. You can't really see it. But there's the, um, there's the buttonhole there. And the button goes inside the little purse. Um, and then you can just po poke the button through. And the only thing I would say is either do very, very neat stitching on the back. I don't know, again, I don't know if you can just see the red uh, thread. Or uh, sew another button on as you're sewing the other button. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. There's a lot of buttons going on. But as you're stitching this one on, you can stitch one on the back as well. And that keeps it quite neat. Um, or you can cover it up with something else. You don't have to cover it up at all. Um, the, the idea is that we do a little bit of um, we do a little bit of uh, weaving okay and it's quite nice to learn something new if you've never done that before but it's really really easy right so let's pop that to one side I don't want that one we're going to concentrate on the little miffy one that I did before for the pattern so um I've got all my pieces cut out here. We'll go on the side camera in just a second. Um, I'll run through everything. So I've got a, a backing, uh, and actually my boats should have been that way, but I wasn't gonna cut another one. So the boats are going sideways. <laughs> it's a novelty. <laughs> and I've got a stabilizer on the back. I've just got a very lightweight stabilizer. So that's my backing. So in other words, it's this bit. Then I've got two pieces for the top binding. So that's back and front. OK, um, nice stripy deck chair fabric. Cute. And that, again, has got a cotton stabilizer on it. Then I've got the two lining pieces, stripy deck chair fabric again. I quite like this fabric. It's like a ticking, isn't it? You can just about see it. Um, so I've got two pieces of that. I don't think I've forgotten anything. If I have, it'll soon, I'll soon find out. And then I've got eight. Now I didn't put in the pattern how many, but you need eight. And I think you could work it out by the pictures that you need eight. Um, and um, let me just take you onto the side camera just for a moment. Well, I'll probably leave you there just, just for a little while. So these are your strips. So it's two and a half inches by five. And all you're going to do is you're going to fold your long edges to the middle. Now, I'm not sure I made that absolutely clear in the pattern. OK, so I do apologize for that. If I didn't and you, you misunderstood me, it's the long raw edges get folded into the middle. OK, so it means that you're, you're hiding your your raw edges, basically. So you end up with a nice, neat folded edge and you can see can you see the line that I made down the middle to, I, I, you, I'll, I'll go through the process. I think that's the best way to do that. And all of those are like that. And these are exact size. And we do, we do um, cut down a little bit once we've stuck it all together because of the dimensions of the little purse. But, um, and I found it easier to do it that way. Some, some people have actually made it with all of the, the strips, but you can decide what you're going to do. So basically, I wanted to make sure that you understood that, that the two long raw edges get folded to the middle. So when I've said to you they get folded in half, it, it actually means this bottom half and this bottom half. That's, that's, ter that's terrible English on my part. And I have amended the pattern today when I reread it. I thought, oh, that doesn't sound right. Um, <laughs> so that's how it wants to be. And that's how we're going to weave them. OK, um, so I'm going to switch my iron on. 
and I'm going to sort of just give these another little press. You can see um, how they, they kind of distort after a while. I think, you know, if, like we've, I've said before, if you've got a clapper, um, everybody is going, will groan now that I've said that again, that you, if you've got a clapper. But if you have, it makes a huge difference to your your folding. Now, all I'm doing, don't panic, I'm not doing anything really just yet. All I'm doing is putting my strips down uh, folded so I can just pop the iron over them again just to make sure they're nice and crispy. I'm not doing anything other than a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of housework. Now, if you want to, you could spray these with Best Press. So let me just reach across there. Oh, here we go. Um, and I'm, I've been using, this is my favorite at the moment. Um, it's Cherry Blossom Best Press. And you could use a little bit of that, um, there we go, just to help with the pressing. And then again, you can use your clapper as well once you've put the heat on. So um, I'll just get these pressed a little bit better. And I'll show you on the last one. Do you look at that, how flat they've gone? And actually, I'm <laughs> well, probably two pieces and that really does set the heat and where they are super duper hot they're not anymore because the wood takes the, the heat out and once again I've got my boats on sideways I'm now going to say this was a designer um, touch that I wanted <laughs> my boats to go sideways obviously I did so um, look this is how I ironed them earlier on and I'll, I'll just quickly go over that. So you're folding them to the middle. So you're folding in half. That's where the fold in half bit comes from. But actually, you're folding in half again. And um, I, I, I probably didn't make that very clear. But you know now. You know now, guys. So here we go. Let's let's put three on the on the pressing mat. Now this is a wool pressing mat. Um, Sometimes my daughter on Avid Crafts has them. Um, this is just a little miniature one. I think this is six by eight, something like that, or five by seven or five by eight, something like that. Um, and really useful, as you can see, for these little projects. Um, and it really does the trick. It really sort of um, transfers the heat. It kind of sucks it into the mat and then kicks it back up again. And look how crispy they are now. Really, really super. I love it. So again, let's do these last two pieces. And we're going to cut into this at the very end. Um, like I said, well, just before we start putting it together. Um, but you don't have to, but you'd have to alter all the sizes. Well, the, the backing and the lining, you would have to alter the sizes for that. So there we are. We've now got, a, you know, we can put the clapper on there, take some of the heat out if you want to. Um, thank you for all the compliments, by the way. I can see them. that They're going through the screen quite quickly. So thank you very much indeed. I really, really appreciate it. So I've got um, five, uh, sorry, eight pieces with my boats going sideways. It is a designer. Um, what is it? <laughs> a design fault? No, it's a designer intentional design. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, it's not at all. This shouldn't have been sideways. So look, you're going to have a six by six piece of stabilizer and I've got the glue facing up. I don't know if you can see the sparkle on it, but the glue is facing up and we're not going to cover all of that. I just wanted to kind of err on the side of caution because we're going to cut that all away. Well, not all of it, but some of it. So what we're going to do and I'm going to butt these up to the corner here. And you'll think I'm a fool. I could have just design feature. Thank you, Sue. I could have just done a five by five um, inch piece, but I like to have a little bit of wriggle room. Now, I'm going to place that right on the corner there. And I'm just going to line up the four because we know it's four deep because you... <laughs> A design feature. I'm looking at this thinking, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> I was in such a hurry to get it done for you all. Yes, I'm going to blame you all. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. So look, there are my four pieces. And I think you saw in the pattern that you've got your four pieces. So that's your start. So you can see that there's, <laughs> there's no raw edges. I suppose I could cut it that way. Maybe. So if I turn it. Maybe that's what I could do. I don't know. I'll have a think about it. 
<laughs> so you've got your four pieces, your four strips, and as you can see, there's no raw edges. All of these are beautiful folded edges, which makes it a creative license. Perfect, Dorothy. Um, and then we're going to weave. Now you're just going to go under and over, under and over. It, obviously, if you're going to make a bigger project, I mean, you could make a, cu a cushion with this technique. But you, what you really want to do is to keep all your strips as close as you possibly can to each other um, because that's the trick of weaving you don't want to have large gaps so if I get my hand out of the way I've gone under I'm going over then I'm going under keep putting them down and then I'm going over and as time goes on all of your strips may start to move a little bit now if they do that's fine okay but try and keep them as close as you possibly can so look this piece here we've gone under over under over and you want to try and get the ends to meet up so the next one we're going over then under so i'm going to try and do it so you can see a little bit better so we're going over and then i flip that back flip that back and pop that under keep it tucked right in and if you want to as you're going along you could stick a pin in things to stop them moving um, it helps and uh, because once you've got it absolutely perfect you don't want it to move so that's, that's not too bad I could do better and then we're going under with this one now obviously if you're doing a larger piece um, it'll get a quite it's, it can get quite fiddly but you, as long as you keep remembering under, over, under, over, you absolutely can't go wrong. So you'll see me fiddling about here now to make sure that all my pieces stay put. All my strips. There we go. And if they move, like that one's moved, I'm just moving it along. This is the, the longest part of weaving. So there we are. There's the second row. So the third row, so we're going, this was over, so this one's going to go under. So we lift that up. And like I say, if you want to, you know, pop a pin in all the way along. Maybe you could put that pin there now. That pin could go here, just to keep everything in place. So this one's going under. Then we're going over. And then we're going under. And the last one's going to do its own thing. So we're just pushing that along. And like I say, try and get, see where that's not quite there. I would try and get that to meet up. And it's just a case of wriggling them all and pushing them along and keeping them super neat. And again, you might want to move your pins because that really does hold everything in place. So there's our th three strips. So, I mean, we could trim it off like that, couldn't we? I'm, I'm tempted, although the back is sideways. <laughs> right, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm going to pretend I didn't notice. And then we're going to go, so where we've gone under on this, this one, this one is going to go over. So we just lay that on the top and then we lift that up and tuck that under. That one goes over and that one goes under. There we go. And because we pressed our strips really well, they were, they're so crispy, <clears throat> they really want to behave themselves. They're really doing a good job for me. Okay, my stabilizer's moved a little bit. And see that strip there? That's not quite at the edge. Now that doesn't want to be like that because that's going to be part of your seam allowance. So we're going to shimmy it along a little bit move all these pieces up keep shimmying it along it's better really to have it with where you know where you're sh where you're seeing it there's the edge there where you're seeing it at least try and get those in the seam allowance and the only reason why they move is because you're going in and out and you're losing a little bit of the fabric by doing that and of course you could make them longer and then trim the whole thing I've just given you the exact measurements but you, you don't have to do it like that but this is just kind of your starter for 10 okay so now I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that 
So that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's done. Okay, that's done. Hi, Catherine from Toronto. I hope you're well. Yvonne says artistic liberties. Yeah, it is a liberty, isn't it? But you see, I could turn it that way. I, do you know what? I don't think it makes a jot of difference, really. I'm just going to keep going. I'm always going to assume that that's my top edge. So I'm just going to keep it like that. Actually, that boat's OK. <laughs> but it is a non-directional fabric <laughs> because some of the some of the boats go up and some of them come down. So it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm going to ask your permission. It doesn't matter, does it, guys? No. Right. So now what we want to do is we want to press that. And what we'll do is we'll press it from the front first. Now, I don't really want you to keep your eye on this for very long. I want you to consider how many layers of fabric that heat has got to go through. So there's one, two, three, four, four layers of fabric before it even gets to the glue. So we're going to do the best we can to hold it in place and then we'll flip it and then we'll get a nice, a nice bond. All right. So just keep your iron on there don't don't do this because we're doing weaving you want it to not wriggle we've had enough trouble with wriggling or well, we could have done <laughs> so <laughs> there we go so just try and bond some of it down now you'll find when you do this that these end pieces here will obviously will never bond because there's nothing underneath. Now, if you want to, you could put a little bit of um, glue stick under there or a little bit of quilter's tape. Uh, I, don't, I don't bother, but you could do if you're feeling a little nervous about having those loose edges. We're gonna, they're gonna be stitched into the seam allowance, but I do understand if you want to um, stick those down. But I would just use a, a regular glue pen that you would use. I'm just seeing if I can find mine. Hold on, let me reach. Oh, bear with. Sorry about the view. <laughs> so you might want to use something like this. And you could lift, lift it up, put a little bit down and glue it. I don't, I don't think it's vital, but it might give you peace of mind that those pieces are going to stay there. Just that so you only need the tiniest of bits. A um, bit like when we're, in, when we're English paper piecing. Just the smallest of bits going round. There we go. So that one as well. There we go. No bother. So that's mostly glued. So now we're just going to flip it over like that. OK, that'll that'll do nicely. And then we're going to glue it together and these the stabilizer is just for gluing just for gluing um, it gives the it a little bit of rigidity but it's not intentional that uh, like a like a it's you know it's not like a wadding or a backing where it's intentional it's just really to glue all the pieces together okay so now we can trim that oh that's lovely it feels great <laughs> So I'll just get my rotary cutter and ruler. So we're going to trim it off at the side like that. And then we're going to trim it here. Now in the pattern, in the pattern, hold on, let's just get me pattern. It says, hold on, bear with. <clears throat> so trim it so the piece measures five inches by four okay and it says the top edge will have a, a quarter inch piece of weaving only and you can see in the picture sorry you can see in the picture we've got a tiny little piece up there um, like I said some people have decided their weaving is so beautiful they don't want to do that and that's absolutely fine but I'm going to be really ruthless and cut mine away and then we're left, hopefully, with a piece four by five. We can measure it, actually, against this and make sure that it's... I can take a little bit off this end here. That's the thing about weaving. It's, um, it, will, it will wriggle a little bit <laughs> because you're adding on fabrics and all that sort of thing. 
Right, so let's just um, let's just have a, a quick look at everybody. So I'm hoping that you've kept up with me so far. I always deliberately keep things at a slower pace than perhaps normal, but you should have a piece now that looks like that. Can't see it very much, but that's our woven piece. And now um, it's the top edge where you've got a quarter inch left of your weaving. That is your top edge, okay? That's your top edge. And your next piece, which is the top binding, in this case I've got my gorgeous stripy fabric, that's the next piece we're going to add and then we're going to add the lining, okay? So it's right sides together and we're going to stitch a quarter inch along there and it'll just about catch the, the top part. I mean, if, if you go a little bit bigger or if you go a little bit smaller, please don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. So let's take you over to the, uh, to the, the other view that we have. And I'll just bring my machine in so you can see what I'm up to. Hopefully you can see that okay. So all I'm doing is, let me show you on this camera. So see the top edge there? That's, that's our top. And I'm going to stitch my top binding piece on so it's right sides together and if you want to you can pop a clip or a pin in there hold on i can't see what i'm doing um, you can pop a, a pin in there and uh, keep those two layers together but i'm just going to go for it it's only a little piece i could probably trim the sides off a little bit actually so quarter inch seam allowance like i say you should just about catch that top edge in if you don't please don't worry and as I said, don't forget you would need to alter the sizes if you're going to keep all four strips of um, weaving in. So there's our top. Isn't that beautiful, that fabric? <gasps> and then we're going to add the, the lining. OK, so the next piece is, is this is my lining. And again, we're right sides together. Uh, although this hasn't got a right or a wrong. And we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away along that top edge, right along the top there. So right sides together and a quarter inch seam allowance. And because we've got um, lots of layers going on and this stays fairly flat, I'm actually going to iron all these seams open, which just reminds me to put my iron back on again. So now we've got a piece that looks like that. OK, so that's the main body here. That's the top binding there. And this is the lining. So now I'm Oh, somebody says it's sunny and warm in Arizona. Connie, I am not jealous. I am not going to talk about it, but how lovely. <laughs> so this is my this is the backing. So if we look at the purse that I made, it would be that bit there. Can you see how the, the boats go up and down? Isn't that the most gorgeous fabric ever in the world? This is the pink version. So again, I'm going to attach, well, which way around are we? There we are. So, well, I told you my boats were sideways. Oh, that's exactly how I wanted them to be. <laughs> so I'm going to stitch on my um, top binding. Now what I really want to do, and I've got to think about this now, I want it so that red stripe is the same both sides okay <laughs> let's see if i can do it so if i think i've got to think hard so if i do it like that let's have a look i'm just fiddling in the background guys just ignore me for a moment and then this bit goes like that i think that's right yeah i think that will do right so <laughs> so right sides together with our backing and our top binding and these have both been stabilized if you look at the back it's got the cotton stabilizer on it and that has as well okay um it's just it's a, just a nice touch it, it's just a nice rigidity it's not too much you don't want wadding it's gosh wadding and batting it would be too thick so a quarter of an inch seam allowance so there's our top binding attached so i'm hoping it's still going to be the right way Sue says it's gloomy in Gloucestershire. Oh dear. It's just rubbish weather. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. We'll all get upset. So now I'm going to stitch my lining onto the top of my 
hold on let me hold this properly for you so I'm going to stitch the lining onto the um, top top binding now this fabric this stripy fabric is doesn't have a right or a wrong side um, sorry about that some people complain about that <laughs> why didn't you use um, a fabric that had a right and a wrong side um, because I don't want to right so move on so there's our um, oh have we frozen let's just have a quick look at the picture hold on a second let's just see we may have frozen here or we may be okay I'm not sure doesn't look good to me Oh, you can hear fine, but you're frozen. Oh, dear. Let's see. I'm frozen on all cameras, guys. Oh, dear me. Let's just see if it'll come back. I can, I, Karen, I know, darling. I can hear, I can see it. I can see myself that it's frozen. Isn't that a shame? Let's just give it a moment. Let's see if it um, sorts itself out. Yeah, I know it's frozen. You don't need to tell me. I know it's frozen. Um, so what, what we might have to do is to start, not start again, but um, call John. I don't think John can do anything for frozen things. Um, but we'll give it a moment. Give it a moment. I'll just um, send him a text just to see if he can help me out. Let's see, because I don't suppose he'll be watching. So let's just send him a text and see what happens see what happens so I'm sorry about that guys I can see you're all still there I can see you're all still there um, it's still on Facebook and YouTube yep I can see that I haven't lost anybody um, time for a reboot uh, then I would definitely lose you all so here comes my John so John we are frozen on all cameras um, but they can still hear me <laughs> <laughs> so is there, do you think there's anything that we can do? Can we switch a camera off and switch a camera on again? Have you tried changing cameras on there? Yes, there? yes I have. Yeah, I've tried changing cameras. But everybody's still there. Thank you so much guys for sticking with it. Um, yes, John probably could bring me a sherry. Um, so we'll see yeah. how we get on. Can you not reboot the camera, love? Will that not work? Not no, don't think so. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not us. Sound is still there. The sound is still there. We're still streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, they both froze so. though. Yeah, <laughs> it's all, all three cameras are frozen. Yeah, it's there's nothing we can do. It's not us. Okay, love. There's nothing we can do. Right. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for sending okay, me some Florida heat. <laughs> Our cameras aren't frozen. No. Okay, love. It's the, it's the internet thing that's just frozen. Right. Okay. <sighs> okay, guys. So what we will do is... Um, Rosemary, I'm still... I'm frozen on YouTube as well. What I'm going to have to do, guys, is to start again um, a second um, live. So I 